Hi, my name is Erin Thatcher. I live in Okaloosa County, Florida, and I'm a mother of two children. Ansley, who is six years old, and Adriana is 13. Ansley is a spirited young child. Adriana enjoys practicing her versatile fashion sense on her Barbies. She loves music and is starting to take guitar lessons this year. Uh, Adriana has developmental and intellectual disabilities, specifically spina bifida. Today, we are here to discuss how implementing self-advocacy in, within our school systems is, a vi is vital to the successful transition into the community. Our goal today is to make self-advocacy and self-determination curriculum mandatory for all students. This year, a total of 3,777,115 students with disabilities are enrolled in the Florida schools. We uh, support an emphasis on including those individuals with disabilities into a full, inclusive general education environment within our community after graduation. However, there is a need to partner persons with and without disabilities together in self-advocacy instruction for a fully included community. The good news is that such curriculum has already been developed through the Florida Department of Education and through Project 10. However, this curriculum is not mandatory. Implementation of this curriculum is of importance to further the goal of providing the tools of self-advocacy to everyone. Enhancing and building self-advocacy skills should happen over the span of the student's academic career, starting in elementary school and continuing through graduation. Students will be taught the concepts of self-advocacy and self-determination along the way. Each step of the curriculum will build on itself and students will progress uh, through each academic year. Each member of our group will now enhance on how the self-advocacy experience and the curriculum. Hello, my name is Mark Kelly. I am 32 years old. I live in Lakeland, Florida. I want to work. I want to be self-sufficient as I can be. I currently am doing an on-the-job training, and I like doing the work, but have challenges with self-advocating. I have a driver's license, and I'm able to drive myself to and from work with my own transportation. I can also type extremely well. I can type 60 words a minute. I am dedicated and show up on time and do what's needed and is expected of me. I am doing data entry of medical bills and coding. I thought I was doing quite well in getting the hang of it, what I was sent there to do. Unfortunately, both my boss and coworker who I report to thought otherwise. They felt I was making mistakes and instead of coming to me as an employee, they decided to go to my job developer. They thought I could not do the job correctly or understand how I can or could improve. They really should have come to me first and teach me how I can do things correctly. This is, after all, how people learn. My employer did not provide me the support that I needed or treat me like everyone else without a disability, and the job developers were not my advocates. Because of these types of issues, I haven't been able to keep or maintain current employment. I truly think that my employer should be one of the community supports and they need to be more understanding of those of us with developmental disabilities. We can do anything just like anyone else with the supports and assistance. We need more help, understanding, and need more patience and willingness to work alongside us. I am now with my fourth employment specialist company because of the lack thereof of experience, training, and knowledge about how to work with people with the well known disabilities. Our state needs more professionals who truly understand how to support those of us with disabilities. If they spent more time asking or working alongside us and less time trying to change who we are, maybe they would be able to provide us with what is really truly needed, a community facilitator. Finally, I plan on becoming an independent business owner or brand partner of a company called Viseo, and with the proper help and guidance, I plan to be the best independent business owner brand partner that I can be. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon. My name is Limari Munoz Ingram. I'm a proud parent of a beautiful young lady, Taya Paradise. She loves to sing and dance, and most importantly, she loves to watch Hallmark movies, that love story. 
She was born with a rare chromosome disorder. There was only 38 cases in the United States with her disorder, and they died by the age of two years old. Under the umbrella of that diagnosis comes many other diagnoses that actually affect her intellectual disability, her Dandy Walker cyst variant, which is a part of her brain that's missing, along with others that are endless and, and too much to go into. The doctor had told me that Taya wouldn't live past her two, her second birthday. They told me she wasn't going to walk and that she had a very high percentage of being profoundly retarded. Taya is now 18 years old, and I am proud to say that she is due to graduate in May with a special diploma. You know, I think as parents of persons with disabilities, of children with disabilities, we want to live just one day longer than our child. However, as much as we want to do that, and that could be our dream, it's not much of a reality. So teaching the skills of self-advocacy and self-determination take on a new role and a new importance for our children. Without them learning those skills, they're not going to be able to be independent and be productive individuals in society. In order to establish that and make that strong foundation for them for their future, we need to make sure that it is in our school systems. <coughs> the most amazing part of what we are proposing here today is that the Florida Department of Education has already deemed important the core values of self-advocacy and self-determination. There are numerous existing standards and courses that contain those exact concepts, both of which are instrumental in our children's successes in, in throughout their life. The standard and courses are so voluminous that I decided to just pull a few to crystallize for you what we are trying to do in making them actually mandatory and implemented within our school system in elementary school through high school. The standard three, self-determination and self-management. The courses under this section are voluminous. There's a number of different courses that lead up to this, but a few of the things that jumped out at me was the courses of being able to participate effectively in an academic and a career planning, promoting self-awareness and goal setting to meet educational and personal needs, applying skills and strategies to solve personal and school problems, using appropriate social skills and strategies to interact with peers and adults across settings. Standard 11, functioning within a setting, demonstrating the ability to adjust to new routines and changes to tasks, settings, and locations. Standard 19, self-regulation, self-advocating for personal needs in a socially appropriate manner, identifying personal emotions and feelings that impact on physical and mental well-being, Identifying ways that your personal strengths can compensate in areas of need. Standard 20, interpersonal relationships. Responding in a socially appropriate manner to emotions and feelings. Using basic social communication skills to build positive relationships with peers and adults. Using conflict resolution strategies to resolve differences such as communicating, negotiating, and mediation. All of these are already in our system. The federal government has already deemed all of these important. However, in our IEP meetings, it's not implemented. They give us a self-advocacy goal in our IEP, but they don't teach them the skills on how to do that. And I go in this motion of going in circles and circles of talking that, well, she's not raising her hand, and she's not advocating, she's not asking questions. Well, there's a self-advocacy goal for a reason. You need to teach her how to do it. You need to do it one piece at a time. So if my daughter had received a lot of these skills early on, starting in elementary school, I feel that she would have had a stronger foundation now as she's transitioning into the real world. The lessons learned in these standards in these courses will teach those valuable skills necessary for our children to be productive and contributors. In conjunction with these Florida regulations and these standards, there's a program called Standing Up For Me which was established, and it's a curriculum that incorporates a lot of these standards. By incorporating these two, we'll increase all the attitudes, positive attitudes in the world and in society to help make a better place for everyone, not just persons with disabilities. Thank you. Hi, my name is Yesenia Leva former ESE student in, of the Broward County Education System. And I want to share with you a curriculum that indeed has already been put in place or has already been created. And that curriculum is the Standing Up For Me curriculum. 
The Standing Up For Me curriculum is a curriculum based on self-determination and goal setting uh, as your main goal. To begin, students will learn to make their own choices, set their own goals, manage their own lives, and participate in the decision-making processes throughout their educational career and then post-education in their regular lives. The goal is to increase students' involvement in their education and their life, teach self-advocacy skills needed to be successful. This curriculum is also not just for the student. It goes for the student, the teacher, and the parent. For the teacher, it provides, it gives them the ability to provide students input, meaning the interests, the needs of the student, involving the student in the decision making. For the students, it's the involvement and the ownership in decision making. And for the parent, it's to encourage active parent involvement and parent intent. The goal is to participate, know your needs, know your skills. If you don't know what your different abilities are, then how can you possibly know what is out there to help you be more successful. To be able to stand up for yourself during IEP meetings, during a job interview, to be able to stand up for yourself in a social setting. All of those things go back to knowing how to advocate for yourself. Even and so for those in the younger years, in primary through elementary school, having active participation in your IEP meetings or your 504 meetings or whatever that education plan might be exiting that high school career. It's understanding the individual education plan, your strengths and your needs, your input <coughs> decisions and developing your IEP, goal setting, advocacy, expressing your needs and the access services. What's my disability, what do I need, and how do I fulfill those needs? And again, participation. As a former ASC student myself, born with spina bifida, I know what it's like to be labeled mentally disabled because I have a physical disability. I too was put in the special ESE classes because it was easy. It wasn't until the seventh grade that I advocated for myself to be put into regular classes. In the middle of seventh grade year, and I had been in honors AP and regular classes ever since. But because I advocated later on in seventh grade, I missed out on the basic education. Now, I can't pass college math if anybody paid me a million dollars to do it but I'm still fighting it because I want my degree. Now I'm fighting to be an entrepreneur, to be an advocate for others, so that others don't go through what I went through. And how was I able to accomplish these obstacles but was by being a self-advocate? I was told I would never drive, and I got my driver's license. I was told I would never go to college, I went to college. I was told I would never be independent, and I wouldn't live past a certain age, and here I am standing before you. And all of those things go through that self-advocacy self skills that we must teach to our students in a school setting. Our children spend more time in school settings than they do at home. So why not give this power to those that spend the most time with our children to become self-advocates, become self-sufficient, become citizens of our community, and become empowered to handle their future. So we are proposing that the Standing Up For Me curriculum, in conjunction with the Florida Department of Education standards, become a mandatory course for those in elementary through high school, and that that be regulated by the Department of Education with the goal of developing self-advocates and increase the level of acceptance of our non-disabled peers. We are not only proposing that this be given or exercised with those with disabilities, we are proposing that this be across the board to all with and without disabilities to teach the self-advocacy skills to be successful.